So I'm just going to um, uh, highlight some of the, the key achievements um, in terms of building momentum and excitement on women's economic leadership across the organisation through online seminars, um, three global <coughs> learning exchanges, across the livelihoods team we've developed training resources and a new value chain methodology and Claudia will talk in a moment about the online community of practice that is being launched today. Obviously all of this work in terms of analysis and new tools is, is actually going into the design of programs and the development of that that's currently going on through Carl Hughes and, and Hugo and others is, is that we're now really sort of piloting impact assessment in terms of women's economic empowerment linked to the global indicators work. So within a year or two we should be able to say a lot more about the impacts of this. Um, and we've also managed to get commitments both from producer groups and companies to have more inclusive policies and practices, and David will probably talk more about that. And in terms of the benefits for women, obviously um, this work has led to greater participation and benefits in key value chains, new roles in agricultural enterprises, some women leaders now being positioned where they interact directly with other market actors, negotiating contracts, etc., um, companies beginning to engage with how are they going to get small holders in, women small holders into their value chain. So we've done a lot and we feel we've, we've really kind of put some markers down in terms of shifting our approach, um, having some um, good okay. tools, really engaging a lot of both Oxfam staff and partners in this process. But in the course of that we've also realised that you know, there are some areas where our understanding is still quite weak and we don't know enough. And one of these is on how, how women organise in agricultural markets. You know, there's lots and lots of research about women's access to credit, to land, um, to other types of sort of tangible assets, but the, the sort of how women organise and how those forms of organisations inhibit or facilitate their access to other resources as well as markets is something we don't understand enough. And as Oxfam, it's, it's kind of our bread and butter because a lot of what we do is about supporting organisations. And we're aware that a lot of the support to organisations we do doesn't have the desired outcomes in terms of gender equality. So we're currently in, involved in a two-year research process researching this in order to learn from that and embed changes in our own programmes across these countries and, and more widely. And within that process, we've already... Um, carried out an initial mapping of collective action in six subsectors across three countries. We've engaged key allies and partners in Tanzania, Ethiopia and Mali in really understanding the importance of women's collective action, which can be a bit of a sort of blind spot. Everyone thinks about credit, but they don't necessarily think about how do women organise. We've engaged lots of primary stakeholders in the process and we've, we've communicated widely. So um, that's just a very kind of... Uh, uh, overview of, of the kinds of things, the kinds of work we've been involved in in terms of developing an approach and learning feeding into our programme and um, Claudia will um, talk a bit more about how the NIM platform will enable you to you and others to access this more widely.